Hey, listen up. We got another episode of Wise Cracks. Featuring the crack man himself, Bill Krakenberger. And our co-host, John Orlando. Straight from Las Vegas. Wise Cracks is your ticket inside the world of sports betting. With tips, picks, special guests, and more. Only on WSN.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another round. I'm John Orlando, and this is Wise Cracks, and we will be taking another deep dive into the world of sports betting this week with the man himself, Bill Crack Krakenberger. What's up, my man? Yo, what's going on, buddy? Everything all right? We had a little crazy week this week. Uh, lots of action and across the board, really. Week nine in the NFL, the election. By the way, the election not being official yet in betting markets, so we got a lot of crazy things going on so good to see you though john yeah you too man i can't believe it's already november and the playoffs are right around the corner yeah they're they are around the corner and uh, uh i actually I, I love watching nfl playoff football it's funny i really don't watch a lot of games but i do like to watch you know when it counts when they're going all at it so and uh you could feel it in the air the change of weather here in vegas we went from like 85 degrees uh, the next day it was a high of 60 i mean we dropped 25 degrees in one day so yeah. it's almost like it was back east when you know i live back east and i, I know you, you've lived all over the country too you could feel it in the air you know and football's in the air you could feel it outside right now uh it's so true so true crack tell me this as we're getting deeper into the football season now uh, and you're able to see how things are shaking out. Does that influence the amount of money that you're going to be betting week to week? Do you go heavier now that, that you maybe have a better read on things? Actually, uh, no, quite opposite. It's earlier in the season when someone like myself will know a little bit more than the actual originating bookmaker where I'll actually bet more, especially this particular season where we had no preseason in the NFL. So uh, we're actually looking about more in the beginning of the season. As the season goes on, the media uh, and of course reporters and TV and everyone, uh, they, they, know, they know more. So uh, the more they know, the worse it is for a guy like me. I need them to know little and me to know the extra stuff that they don't know. You know, uh, that's, a, that's what everyone talks about now on TV is, you know, ESPN's all the NFL, of course, college football too. But now look, don't forget at the beginning, uh, there wasn't a lot of college football, not as a lot. So we're talking about a mixture of everything, but there's a lot more information out there knowing, knowing what they know now. So uh, for me, I actually bet a little bit less as the season progresses and wait for college basketball and try to strike right when the high, you know, right, right at the beginning of that season too. Got it. So uh, Bill, I'd love to uh, talk about this. My last, uh, my last uh, little week in sports, I was, I was kind of hot last weekend, but uh, I'm going to need you to kind of be my uh, psychologist while I lay on the couch for a minute, if you wouldn't mind. Can I, can I tell yeah. you what went on uh, this, this past weekend for me? Of course. So uh, let's start with, let's start with, I, I had a little bit of a meltdown here this weekend. I, I was on fire and I didn't really make any money. <laughs> so let me... Yeah, I know. Bill, uh, the UFC just had a major fight uh, this past weekend. I was seven out of eight. I picked seven out of eight, including, including, Bill, um, about five minutes before the co-main and main event started, I got in my car. So I originally had picked both favorites in the main and the co-main and the main event. For some reason, uh, like a bolt of lightning, it just hit me. I Because I was already now at that point, five for out of six right and i i thought oh you know what i have it wrong i have it wrong the two underdogs the two least likely fighters they were both well over 40 years old in the co-main and main you had arlovsky uh in the co-main uh 40 something years old i believe uh you know he's been he's been a fighter for a very long time and then in the main event you had glover Teixeira, who i believe is 46 or 7 years old and still competing at a high level in the ufc he was on like a five fight uh win streak and i thought oh my god 
They're both going to win. It's an all dog co-main and main parlay. Bill, I jumped in my car. I drove across the street because I live close to a casino. True story. And I threw down a co-main and main event parlay uh, with the two dogs and they both ended up winning. I ended up being right. Uh, and, I, and I cashed on that one. How and, did you uh, win a ton of money here? Wait a minute. I'm missing so, something. So, okay. So that was Saturday night, right? So then Sunday for football, of course, I gave out my picks last week. I gave, I gave, uh, what did I give out? I gave Raiders money line. I gave Chiefs money line. And I said for my street cred pick, I'm taking the Saints to go over there and whip up on Tom Brady. Remember? Yes, of course. And I mean, so I thought, well, amazing. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I went all in on that because I believed I had that parlay so right on the money. Okay. So I go on early Sunday morning to cash the UFC ticket and to bet on the NFL games. And for whatever reason at the window, instead of just doing what I gave out as my picks, instead of just following the plan, I threw in one more team into my, <laughs> into my parlay oh, convinced man. that this was going to be the biggest week I've ever had in sports and I'm afraid to tell you what team I threw in there because you might just you might fire me on this one, Bill. Who was you it? might. Go ahead, tell me. I was convinced that the Denver Broncos were going to be victorious. Wow. Okay. So you really threw a curveball in there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. No money. Seven out of eight UFC. Uh, three out of three just off the teams that I picked on the show. Uh, and, and, oh, wait, I forgot on Saturday afternoon, uh, the, the reason why I went so heavy on UFC Saturday afternoon, I got to pick the breeders cup, right? I had authentic who won the Kentucky Derby. I picked authentic and I hit the exacta with improbable nine, eight, which also happens to be my birthday. So I, I have a special affection to nine, eight. I'm a September 8th baby. So whenever a nine, eight exacta looks like it could hit, I like to bet on it. So yeah, I, I was on fire all weekend and it translated when it was all said and done. Uh, I think I won a couple of hundred bucks. Wow. This would have been a six figure weekend for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, listen, can I ask you, did, did you have fun? I did, but I, I kick myself. Fun is, is the money in your pocket. Yeah. 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 You know, it's just because to get all, and, and it, what, what made it worse, Bill, was people were DMing me, thanking me for giving, cause I put all the picks up, you know, I, sure. I posted on every, so I had so many people sliding in my DMs. Oh my God, bro. Thanks a lot. Da, 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 da. Yeah, man. Bad. They, so they all won more yeah. money than you won. Obviously a hundred percent. Wow. See that yeah. parlays, man. I know they're fun to bet. And once in a while when they hit they're they're a big payout, but you know, if you bet them, if you bet the same amount that you bet on the parlay or on straight bets here, you would have, you know, wound up, you know, thousands of dollars ahead. So yeah. Um, Speaking of parlays, while you were just talking to me, I pulled this up. I don't know if I'm sure you saw and heard about this. I'm going to hold it up to the camera. This guy hit a parlay at the Venetian. A, I don't know if you guys can read that or not. Oh, yeah, we see it. Seven team parlay. He bet $4,000 at returned. I don't have glasses on, so it's small, but something like $460,000 off a of 17 parlay it only it had two dogs 112 to 1 15 to 1 the rest were were big favorites so uh moving on i'm, I'm glad I, you, you let me air out uh my, yeah. my sins from the from the weekend uh the saints did embarrass the bucks on sunday night i i got some street cred on that one huh yes that was uh, listen it, it was real embarrassing just, they kept on going to brady on the bench showing them i don't know if they were trying to embarrass him or something but i mean here's a guy that can't be embarrassed by the way and for his past career but um yeah, listen, that was a that was what we call a cigar game or a rocking chair game. You sit back in the chair smoking your cigar and life is good. Everything is great. This is easy money. So good job. And uh, we also got the Masters coming up this weekend. Uh, you've had some success betting in golf. I, I, I just uh, was made aware of that year to date. Correct me if I'm wrong on the Crack Wins app. Uh, you are 64 and 37, which uh, adds up to a total of plus 39 units for sports yes. betters. Yes. How are you? So, uh, so you're the golf guru. How did this happen? Great, great golf information. I have some great sources for golf information, not only talking to caddies and stuff, but also some great, uh, we really have some great information at our fingertips that I, I can't give away, but uh, it, it really is uh, an amazing sport for me over the years. It's hard to believe people don't even know you can bet on golf. So it's actually hard 
hard to believe that you could uh, win money betting. And it's, you know, it's matchup versus matchup. So it's not winning the futures. It's not betting DeChambeau to win the tournament, which is, by the way, it's, that's a lot of juice involved in that. They usually take 20, 30, 40, even 50% out of the pool. I'm betting a straight matchup golfer versus golfer. Who's going to finish better at the end of four days of golf? Uh, you know, who's going to finish better at the 72 holes. That's where the money is. And that's, that's how come I've made the money I've made in golf bets. And uh, coming up a little later in the show, we've got a great golf guest. I don't know if you want to divulge the inf- that, uh, that the name of the guest yet, but uh, we do have an incredible uh, golf related guest coming up a little later. Yeah. You know, we have a fantastic guy, friend of mine for years, PGA professional caddy on uh, Casey Kerr, who, uh, like I said, uh earlier um on earlier i had we had him on an earlier show too this guy is just special he's the greatest talker he can just talk through everything he's loved by many other players on the tour he knows everybody and every year he gives me uh you know these lanyards to come down to the masters and hilton head and all this you know follow the pga tour around so look forward to having him on well, crack, I can't wait to, to hear what he has to say. And I want to remind everybody at home, hey, guys, before you place your bets this weekend, be sure to head over to WSN.com. It's got all the information that you need, uh, bonuses at the different books, n- latest news and stuff on all the sports you're going to be betting on. Head on over to WSN.com. It's the sharp move. Yeah, good. That's good that you mentioned that because uh, I, I don't know another website that has the articles that WSN has. I mean, they have so many informative articles on all things across all sports betting platforms, but also my favorite part, the bonuses platform, where you can go by state by state and you could see how much bonus money you can get by signing up to the sports books. And uh, there's articles on everything like that, including uh, the booster bets and stuff. Really good, really informative. Uh, make sure you check out WSN. And while you're checking out uh, WSN, WSN after that crack, I know you don't like when I do this, but I got to remind everybody at home, download the Crack Wins app. Crack, the, the Crack Wins app, I've turned so many of my friends onto it. I've got people sliding into my DMs, longtime friends of mine that have been avid sports bettors, and your app has changed the game for them. These went from losing players. If I, I should be so lucky to follow all of the advice of the Crack Wins app, but I keep going rogue for some reason. But I've got tons of friends that uh, I look like the hero to, all thanks to you for turning them onto your app. So be sure to download the Crack Wins app. It's on Apple. It's on Google Play. Check it out. Oh, yeah. No, I appreciate it. You know, we're, we're, it's free to download. It's a free to sign up, uh, you know, get, get some information out of us here. It's there's great articles too on bankroll management. We, I, I write articles on almost anything that can try to uh, smarten up the sports betters and try to take some of the sports book money. Of course, we also have our selections on there, which I'm very proud to say uh, we're very transparent. We have a write up every week. I'm not one of these guys that talk about what they have done lately, what I've done last weekend, what I've done the last month. I have literally Every week, it's just we talk about anything uh, that happened. We have a losing week, I'll talk about it. We have a losing month, I'll talk about it. Very rare. I think I had two losing months uh, in the past 16. And, uh, of course, never a losing quarter, never a losing year. Um, Listen, you're getting the information that the sharpest guys in the world uh, would love to have. So uh, enjoy that, and uh, thanks for the plug. Yeah, and, you know, to to your point, what I love about that app is that you take it to the next level that a lot of the other guys that do what you do, I mean, nobody does what you do specifically, but you know, your quote unquote competition, they don't give a lot of the stuff away for free like you do. And that's what I think is makes the crack wins app. So great. Yeah. No, we wanted to add that. We appreciate it. No, there's a lot of good free information. I I try to make sure that the people know the value of the number in the NFL, what it is to, to buy points and what you should do, what you shouldn't do parlays, teasers, you know, what, what's the sucker bets and what are the sharp type, type of bets? And again, they're just free to read about right on the app. Thanks. Well, crack, it's that time in the spirit of the Masters this weekend. Uh, thanks to you, you wrangled a, I'm going to call him a golf world legend. And we sat down with him a little earlier today. And here's how it went. Welcome to the 84th Masters, a tradition like no other. For all you golf fans that may not know, we have PGA professional caddy Casey Kerr with us today. 35 years, by the way, he has caddied on the PGA Tour. Let us give you a brief rundown of a few of his career highlights. Casey has caddied in over 1,000 tournaments, 100 majors, 30 masters in a row, 
14 players that have won majors he has caddied for, nine that are in the Hall of Fame, seven past Masters champions, uh, five former number one players in the world. The list goes on and on. Casey, welcome to the show. Uh, you know, I want to know this now, after giving you that great, spectacular introduction. <laughs> what does it feel like to be in Augusta, you know, in November? And what are your thoughts on the venue this year? Well, thank you, Crack. It, it feels good to be here. It, it is quiet here. And so it's a little bit peculiar driving down Washington Road and not sitting in traffic seeing people walking down the street. Uh, uh, the other thing I miss is, you know, that guy that walks down the street, he's, he's got his fingers like that. He'd need two tickets, need two tickets. Oh, yeah. Has- <laughs> oh, yeah. The scalpers. Yeah. And the, he, yeah. he needs two tickets, but he's only going to resell them after you sell them to him. Yeah, I yeah. know all those. <laughs> and, and then, you know, the people that are selling – you know, the, the, the lanyards and they're selling just, they're selling everything. And like yeah. this week, they're not selling anything. Wow. What a difference. So, so, you know, the other hype too, is if, if you're a player, like other sports, basketball, football, baseball, you know, when you get to the stadium, you know, you see all the fans, you start to get all jacked up and you're like, okay, here we go. And then you, you, you drive in and, they all have their different uh, entrances and to the locker room. And, you know, if, if I'm a player driving in, it's like, I feel like I'm driving into Augusta country club just for a, you know, an afternoon tea time. It, it doesn't feel like the man. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Big difference, th- big difference this time around. And, uh, but you know, once it comes on TV and they start showing some pictures of the course, the golfers, it, it, it'll, we'll get back into the swing of things, but I know it can never be like it is, uh, during April. So, yeah, I mean, let's face it. I was thinking about this the other day, the, the members of Augusta, the tradition that it has and, and how it's improved year after year after year. I mean, there's a reason this tournament's in April. I mean, that is the peak <laughs> of the year for that venue. So uh, obviously nothing's going to be the same, but look, they're having the tournament. Somebody's going to slip on the green jacket on Sunday and somebody's going to be happy for about 142 days. Cause like I mentioned to you before, you're not going to be the reigning champion very long this year because you know, four months from now, uh, we, we got another masters coming up. <laughs> so, so the winner of this venue, he's not going to be able to cherish it for the, the whole year before you have to go there and play again. And not that he'll matter. He's just happy to have the, sure. uh, the jacket on. Hey, 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 you know something, Case? I forgot to int- tell, tell the audience this part. Very important. Uh, I have to let them know. You have given me, uh, by the way, on national, t- on, national, on national show that I had, you have given me uh, and all the viewers and listeners some unbelievable information. Uh, last time the Masters was around, of course, you gave like three or four golfers. And then at the end, you said, you know what? You got to. Remember Tiger the Woods. Tiger Woods is like fifteen to one here. Do not throw him out of the, of the pack here. And sure enough, that one. But the big one was the former British Open, which is now called the Open. You uh, gave us again three, four golfers, and in, in that field, the last golfer you gave us was Shane Lowry. And I said he's eighty to one where, where I was at at the time at the South Point. He was a hundred to one at another, another casino in town. And sure enough, Shane Lowry won the U.S. Open. So I'm sorry, the British Open, which is now the Open. So you have given us some really good information in the past. I'm hoping you're going to do the same thing here. I want to I want to throw it over to my, my co-host, John Orlando, um, also, because I know you haven't met John yet, and but you're, you're going to see him here for the first time. And uh, I know he's uh, he's just breaking in his golf game. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, Casey, I'm, I'm going to circle back to you in a second. I just, Bill, I'm looking through my old text messages. I don't seem to see the text about the 80 to one golfer that was going to win, Bill. That was unbelievable. It was 100 to I, one over at the Westgate. It's it's pretty sick that he gave that out. Yeah, and, I I didn't seem to get that info from you. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> we'll talk I about that later. It's okay for guys that need the money like <laughs> us, John. I see, I see. So, Casey, I have a question for you. How much when a, when a guy is having a tough day out there, how much of what you do in, encompasses, you know, not maybe not coaching might not be the right word, but helping him get back on his mental game? Is do you do you do a lot of that as well when you're out there? Well, it depends on the player. I mean, every player has a different personality. So, 
I think the important thing for uh, all counties, including myself, is number one, stay positive, and number two, just one shot at a time. I mean, it, it, let's say your player played a couple of bad holes, and you go, "Come on, let's make a few birdies, get going." And you get to going too fast, and then and then the train wrecks, and then it crashes, and then it burns. And um, Faldo, I think, back in the day. I remember listening to him and he was winning and very successful. And it sounds like an elementary cliche, but just one shot at a time because the adrenaline, like, like uh, 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 Crack and I were talking about, and the excitement of being there can just be so exhilarating that the simplest things like in sports, like, how about this one? Hey, how about just take a deep breath and that, <laughs> and then throw them some water and then all of a sudden the energy comes back they look at the flag they picture their shot bam it's next to the flag with may birdie and you're like all right boss let's just keep it going you know so the yeah. way that you go about it it's different for every player some are grizzly bears some are teddy bears some just want you to shut up <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know Casey, some- now that you say that, too, you're right. We were talking earlier this morning, and, and I want you uh, to, to tell the, uh, the viewers, the listeners, how important Thursday is. Listen, what you said earlier was so good. I said, you have to say this on air. So how important is Thursday uh, at the Masters? Well, uh, one thing about Thursday I mean, everybody's a little bit nervous. Everyone's a little bit jittery. I mean, we got to get started. We got to get off to a good start. We pretty much know where the Thursday spin are. You know, we're warmed up on the rains. The weather's going to be what the weather is. And one of the cliches from the green jacket room, you know, the guys that are former winners there, they all have their little club and they talk over the years. And, And I remember hearing the cliche years ago, you cannot win the masters on thursday mm-hmm. but you can lose it that is great that is so that good. is gold that yeah is so, good. so so if you watch tiger and watch the great players like thursday you know there might be a pin in the yardage that just might be just you, you're just licking your chops but you're a little bit patient you're not over aggressive you don't make the mental mistakes you stay calm and you just bide your time. You shoot that one over or that one under, that even part right around there. And then you, you, you get off the first round, you finish it. You go and have lunch, you get to the range, you're like, whoo, okay, glad that's over. Now let's go play golf. So the first day is so critical because if you do shoot yourself in the foot the first day and you go to the range and you start to chase on a golf course that you cannot chase, it just, it, it, one thing about going to the Masters, if, let's say, crack, you, you get a job or, or, or you're a player. There's one thing about getting an invitation to the Masters. I always said for years, it took me years to realize it. That's half the battle. The other half, now let's go to the Masters and contend and compete. I don't want to be there to, to sign autographs, to see the fairways and the trees and talk about history. I want to be part of history. So now let's get stuck in there. Wow. Great. That's great. That's great. You know, you've been with these great golfers. You know, I forgot to mention it earlier. Uh, John, listen to the, this list. He has been he has been caddying or it's called on the bag for a, a countless amount of superstars, like I said earlier. But the actual names are amazing. Uh, Payne Stewart, Fred Couples, Ernie Els, VJ Singh, <laughs> and of course, the great Arnold Palmer. That's right. He wow. Sent pictures of, of caddying for Arnold. Just so cool, man. I, I, I love it. But now you mentioned something, though, Case. You mentioned something about Tiger Woods. Listen. Uh, I'm, I'm a gambler. We talk about a gambling. This is a gambling podcast too. Um, wisecracks. I, I love betting against Tiger Woods. I was so pumped up this morning. One of our sports books in town, Westgate, put up these individual props about against four and against Tiger Woods. And they actually said, will Tiger finish in the top five? Will he finish in the top 10? Or will he finish in the top 20? The top 20 was like, you had to lay two to one. Uh, and, but here I wanted to lay like five to one, he will not finish in the top 10 and 10 to one, he will not finish in the top five. And you basically told me, I don't like laying against Tiger, even at this age and even at this point in his career. Is that right, Case? 
Well, the question was uh, uh, proposed to me earlier, can Tiger win? Can Tiger win? Uh, let's, let's say that we were asking Tiger that question this morning. Well, the answer is uh, emphatically beyond a shadow of a doubt, of course I can win. It's Tiger Woods. I mean, when Jack Nicklaus won in 86, he birdied 9, 10, and 11. Then he went to 15 and eagled 15, birdied 16 and 17. In 86, he put the jacket on. I mean, think of Unbelievable. Those Unbelievable. Yeah. People don't realize how – it sounds like maybe it's just not a big feat. That was a giant feat. Jack, at this at this time in his career, it was, you know, over 100 to 1. I mean, this is unbelievable. The end yeah, of his he, career. Yeah, yeah. He was done. So, look, you leave Tiger in there and give him a sniff, and then he has a chance on Sunday, and then all of a sudden he's hanging in there, and then guys look on the leaderboard, and, and, and no offense to the guys that were up there last year, but when, when the Tiger came creeping up the leaderboard, those names came creeping down, and at the end of the day, Tiger got the jacket. Like It was, it was exciting. And, and look, history can repeat itself, and as I said to you, their courses for horses. That horse loves <laughs> that course. That's great. I mean, look, That's great. I, mean, look, I love look, it. That, Look, yeah. Nicholas, Nicholas has six jackets. Tiger has five. I mean, I, I think Arnold has four. Mickelson has three. I mean, think of think of the Bubba Watson has two. The guys that are double majors, uh, uh, Ben Crenshaw, Nick Faldo has three. I mean, you know, these guys don't accidentally win it three times or two times or four times. They love the place. And you know what? If you put the jacket on once, what's better than putting the jacket on once? putting it on the second time <laughs> wow wow very good i love it uh, yeah. you know, and oh by the way oh by the way it still fits oh now i have two jackets right 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 we know listen we know the masters dominates the tv ratings each year and the, it's really the viewing they're viewing public it's their favorite event to watch of the year golf wise me too i'm glued to the tv so tell me about it from the perspective of someone who's walked the course in competition so many times what makes the Masters so special to you, Casey Kerr, from inside the ropes? What makes the Masters special to me is the first time I went to the Masters as a kid growing up, I never, ever anticipated I'd be a caddy at the Masters. I mean, watching it on TV was the most exciting thing in my life. Well, when I went the second time and then the third time, and it just keeps getting better and better and better. And the members of the Masters, you got to also give them some serious consideration. Every year, they, what can we do to make it better? What can we do to make it better? What can we do? They always ask how to tweak everything. They're perfectionists. So if you and I have a golf tournament, let's say in California, Vegas, you know, anywhere in the world, we go to the Masters, and the Masters is the criteria of how we're going to run a golf tournament because theirs is run to perfection. And so when you go to a venue that, that's that exciting, like if you look on my Instagram, uh, we were talking about it, Casey.Kerr, K-E-R-R. -R. I put up a photo on Monday of me in the caddy shack with Joe LaCava, a couple other characters in there. It's a black and white photo. Look at that caddy shack. The Caddyshack that we have now, we didn't even have a television back then. We barely even had a floor. We had a wooden bench and put together with like a <laughs> hammer and nail. I mean, it was incredible. Now the players hang out in the Caddyshack. We got screen TVs, the same food the players eat. I mean, the way that they treat us now is royalty and the caddies get treated fantastic. And so you got to applaud the people that, run the tournament and the care and the love that they show to us remarkable so that's why you fall in love with it because they really show you love that's great that's great you know case for me and i'm sure many others the masters symbolize the start of the pga season and the beginning of springtime uh, you know the lush grass the, the azaleas that are blooming uh, now it's teeing off in november though Tell our listeners how the course will look a little different, how it could play the actually how it could play different this time around. What do you think? Yeah, well, I was with JP Fitzgerald, who caddy for Rory McIlroy last night at dinner, and I asked him that question because not being able to go out there, I, I said, JP, how is it how is the course different? The grass is Bermuda grass. So Bermuda grass grows in the south, bent grass in the north because of the heat. Well, he said it's grabby. 
And he said it's going to be a lot more difficult. And so that's probably the number one factor. So chipping will be a little bit more trickier and not as delicate where you'd have that perfect lie because the grass can grab the club and alter the shot. Uh, that was the main thing that JP said. Number two, the course is playing very long, very long. It rained all last night. So that's getting back to your viewers. Uh, and the bottom line is let, let's get to who do we like to, to win the tournament and who are some that's of our next, favorites. That's my next question. Yeah. You know, cause now you're getting into, now you're getting into some secret sauce here. I'll tell you right now. Uh, you told me some stuff off air this morning and wow, this is this is what this is what people come here for. This is what they come to Wisecracks for. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau, of course, he's everyone's favorite right now. He's the betting favorite of the week. Not only is he hot, but everyone feels like literally the length will help him dominate. And you're saying it's going this 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 conditions here will probably help his game. So who do you think this weekend? Maybe we see some value in, or what do you think about Bryson's chances? And and, and in general, like I said, maybe you could we can come up with a couple. A couple uh, long shots for our guys too here. Well, right off the gate, you, you know, I, I've heard the stories. I've read the stories about what he's hitting into some of these holes. And number one, when Tiger won his first Masters, he destroyed the place. As, as I said earlier, nobody even had a chance on Sunday. I think he won by 12 shots. It was anticlimactic. What Bryson DeChambeau is doing with that golf ball right now, as far as accuracy off the tee and how close he is to his next shot, I, I do not think that anyone can touch him this week. I, I really think he's wow. – and, mental, and mentally, you got to look at it this way. He shot three under on wing foot on Sunday. He wasn't leading. I mean, he had to go out there, play aggressive, and attack it. Now he won the U.S. Open. I can only imagine – uh, like think of Mike Tyson in his day where he was just knocking people out. When you have confidence, one thing mm. about confidence, it is powerful. And you, when you have confidence playing golf, I mean, it's you and the golf course and you are destroying it. And so right now, I think his mind is just on the golf course. And when you're in the zone, people always ask, how do you get in the zone? How do you stay in the zone? You are completely focused for that time and second in your life only on what you are doing at that particular second. One thing about DeChambeau, he is in the zone. The guy that's under the radar that I, I think doesn't get any credit or, or limited credit, I haven't heard anybody speak anything about him. I don't know him that well other than to say hi to him, but I think his caddy and the communication that they share with each other, the dialogue that they have, because you know he's an abstract guy, I think he's done a phenomenal job. He hasn't caddied that long, but obviously they have good chemistry and, and I only have positive things to say about him. What, you know, what makes a good caddy? You talked about Bryson's caddy. What makes a, a caddy uh, a, a good caddy? What, what kind of work goes into it? What, 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 what makes a caddy the man for his guy? 100% beyond the shadow of a doubt. What makes a great caddy is having a great player. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. I love that answer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, let, me, let me tell you, Tiger Woods in his prime, no offense to any cat. He could have won with a volunteer. I mean, just carry <laughs> <it up. laughs> uh, I mean, I love the volunteers. I mean, we need them. But I mean, look, when you're on, you're just on. I mean, you know, it's like a jockey. When you're riding secretariat, just stay on the horse, please. He'll get you across <laughs> the line. You know, these guys, I can tell you, and they smell blood. Boy, when they know they're near the top and they're on their game and it's coming down the stretch, let me tell you, they relish you bringing it on. Bring it on because I, I want to beat you when you play your best. I don't want to beat you when you don't play your best. I want to beat you when you play your best because that way I took you down when you were at your best. And I'll take that. That's how they are. They're, they're fierce competitors. Awesome, man. Listen, great. Yeah, to that's have great you. Thanks stuff. For, thanks for stopping for us and pulling over. And, and uh, we really appreciate having you on. Okay, crack. Let's talk about this week's games. I won't be so bold to say this is an easy week because obviously no week is easy. But with that said, 
I'd like to see how this one unfolds. I'm going to key in on three games as I always do. So let me start off with game number one. We've got the Ravens versus the Patriots. Uh, the line on that game is Patriots uh, plus seven. Uh, you know, we talked about the Patriots last week. They're coming off a comeback against the Jets. The days of this team being feared are long gone. Uh, I think the combination of playing Monday night, traveling back to Boston is going to factor in. So I'm looking for the Ravers and former Cowboy Des Bryant to make this game look like a scene from an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Ravens minus seven smells like the winner. What are your thoughts, Crack? Well, you know, the seven's a key number. Make sure you get that. You don't want to go uh, – one, one of the sports books offshore that I follow, Pinnacle has seven and a half, but everywhere else it's seven. So it's, it's a Sunday night game. Should be lots of action. And, and if I had to uh, pick anything, I'd probably pick your side, maybe in a teaser. So, um, okay, yeah, I like that one. Okay, uh, moving on to game number two. We got the Seahawks versus the Rams. I uh, believe the uh, Rams are a slight favorite. Um, I see this one being a nail biter, but I think Russell, I've become a, a Russell Wilson fan. I think this year, I mean, I've always respected his game, but, uh, I think, uh, that stadium is only about 12 minutes away from the Pacific ocean. And that means the Seahawks are going to be victorious crack. <laughs> cool. Well, you know, uh, last week we see the Seahawks got shredded by the bills and the Rams had a buy. So, uh, I'll tell you right now, my own opinion is this may be, the public play of the week with uh, the Seahawks coming back. So uh, we'll see what happens with the line here. It's still hanging around the same thing. And this is actually a game that I'm looking forward to maybe even watch. I think it's going to be a really competitive game. And uh, like I said, I think it's going to be a, a public play by Seattle, uh, by, by, the, by the public. We'll see what happens. And uh, I'm rooting for your side. Wait, you're going to watch a, a football game? This is, yeah, this is epic. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to watch this one. Did you watch any games last week? No. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I watched the end, the end of a game. Hold on. You watched watch. the end of the Raiders game. The end of the Raiders game I watched. Yeah, how'd you know that? Yeah, because it was just uh, you had to. I mean, yep. someone had to be texting you saying to did. this song. Yeah, I watched the end of that game for the last five minutes or something. And uh I'm rooting for my buddy too over there. When when if I'm not betting against the Raiders, I'm rooting for my 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 buddy Teddy Atlas. He's the scouting coordinator for the Raiders, so I'm rooting for him. Uh, Were you watching? Were you watching that game in a book by any chance? Or were you? No, home? no. Oh, so it was insane. And it was really exciting because you really felt like uh, live sports was back because, you know, obviously they won on the call. Uh, you know, that the, the, the call got overruled after looking at the replay. It, yeah. It, you know, everyone um, must have been screaming and yelling both ways. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was insane. So oh. it's funny that we speak of the Raiders. Uh, they're, they're back here in Vegas this weekend, our hometown team. And that brings me to game number three, which is going to be labeled as my street cred game here uh crack we've got the broncos versus the raiders i don't normally like to bet rivalry games but since this one is in our backyard and the raiders as you know are my secondary team to my beloved dallas cowboys i figured it's my civic duty to pick this game uh as my street cred game of the week so with that said even though i have said in the past i love Derek carr i think the broncos defense and drew lock who's improving every week i really like this kid uh are you know i think they're going to come into vegas and and beat the raiders well, I'll tell you, uh, listen, they, they really are beginning to come together each week. They look like a real football team, the Raiders, that is. And uh, if you know the Raiders, you know when they start – when you start to feel good about a team like this is usually when they bite you right in the butt. So uh, five and a half is kind of an offline too. You know, you don't know what that really – five is not a keen. That's like the worst number in the NFL. Um, oh, know. but crack, I forgot one thing. Yeah. I'm taking the money line oh. in, in John okay. fashion. Okay, good, good. Well, listen, I mean, listen, honestly, that's a, I, I may have to agree with that bet more than disagree. So, okay, um, you know, and I would wait more towards game time even because public money is going to come in on the Raiders. It happens all the time now. The people love, you know, they, they love betting a, a team like the Raiders that's, you know, winning every week and, and not every week, but they're coming along here. They beat Kansas City. And, uh, and so, so you think about that. If people always say if they could beat they beat the Chiefs, man, they got to be able to beat this team. So you you look right. for a better price on a money line on the underdog more towards game time. So crack, it's interesting that you just said that last little tidbit. Uh, that leads me to our Twitter questions uh, for the week. Uh, we got one question from uh, from Wesley. Uh, I have a trouble reading that there. Wesley Pipes Clayton. Do I yeah. have that right? That was his name. Yeah. That's, that's well, okay. That's a great name. Wesley yeah. Pipes Clayton. I love it. Pipes. Okay. So he's asking Bill, how early do you try to get down on games as soon as the line gets posted or more towards game time? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and this, this particular year, 
Uh, mon early Monday mornings, I've been I've been betting a lot of uh, betting a lot of of, of the NFL and, and college football. You, you kind of get down early on the games because there's competition for that. There's other syndicate groups, and when I say syndicate, I mean gambling syndicate groups. So you want to try to be, it's like a race. You beat try to beat them on getting down. So um, yeah, you know it, it's a it's a cat and mouse thing with these sports books and these. A lot of them don't want to put lines up early because they know groups like myself do that. Uh, but yeah, I try to get down as much as I can during, uh, when, when the line first comes out and, and it's bettable, it comes out on Sunday actually, but literally they take $500 bet. So you want to wait till Monday, you can get a little bit more down. And then, uh, maybe towards the game time, I could find some nuggets of value, some low hanging fruit after the public comes in and pounds these favorites and I can pick off an underdog or two or, um, you know, some under money. So that that's a good question though. Thanks, Wesley. And and let me ask you, do you ever go back to so like if you get down early in the week, do you ever go back to the that same game and either double down on it or anything you know, of that nature? Or I no? gotta tell you, and I could be just stubborn and old fashioned. Uh, I'm all about CLV, which is closing line value. So uh, good question, John. I if I'm betting something plus seven early in the week, and then it goes down to six and five. And then game time, it comes back and it's seven again. Well, uh, unless it's the public that's sharpening up that line, not well, shaping that line, I should say. Uh, I really tend to, to not bet against other syndicate groups because we all have our ways of handicapping games and coming up against each other. So I won't double dip normally on a game, but I will double dip if you have a slow moving sports book or a square sports book where I know I can get a little bit more uh, if the sharp books are still favoring my position. Got it. Okay. Now I love this next question. I think this is, this is a great question. Uh, 100 round have asks at what point did you know this was going to be your career crack? Ooh, yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, I was in Atlantic city. I was playing a, a video blackjack machine that had an edge that some of my friend, one of my friends sent me down to play and the guy next to me, you know, uh, I talk about this all the time, six foot six glasses, very methodical. He was cupping the rolls of coins Back then it was coins. It wasn't uh, dollars in and out or it wasn't ticket in, ticket out. And he started talking to me and telling me about advantage sports betting. This is 20 some 26, 27 years ago. So uh, he started talking to me about bookmakers in New York and bookmakers in Philadelphia, how you can middle and scalp. And, and uh, here I am, I'm working, literally working two jobs and sometimes picking up a third gig on the weekend. Listen, I'm a blue collar guy. I come from a blue collar family. That's what I did. So we worked. We didn't have money for college. Thank God. Knock on wood. Because uh, I can never make as much as I made betting sports the last 25 years with any college degree. That's for sure. So uh, uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, I knew right then that that next week I got to be friends with him. And we were partners for the next decade. Think about life is a lot about luck. Just think about that. I'm sitting down at that seat, talking to the guy I talked to next to me. If it wasn't for him, he was also an advantage player. If it wasn't for talking to that guy, I would have never been here today. And I wouldn't know you, John Orlando. Well, I'm glad that all worked out the way it did. Uh, let me ask you more to, to your point there. It's now, I think it's, it's kind of changed, right? You doing what you do. It's now, I th when you started, I mean, I consider you a pioneer at this. I mean, when you started, it was probably frowned upon. You probably looked at as, a, as a, almost maybe even a degenerate. Where now, I think it's different. There's a way more respect uh, for people that do what you do. And was it, was it hard in the beginning, um, like with your friends and family uh, and how they viewed you when you were doing this? Oh, boy. Absolutely. It's an unbelievable thing that you point out here because, you know, everyone was like, you're a gambler. Oh, no, he gambles. Right. Oh, my God. He's a gambler. And, you know, you got to keep that in the closet. Don't talk about that. You know, you're being a gambler. And even my parents were always very old school, uh, again, blue collar uh, family. They were, you know, you get a job, you get married, you have a couple of kids, a white picket fence is your future. You hope to just be the part of the American dream. You're going to gamble? Oh, no, you're gambling. What I try to tell them was it's not gambling, mom and dad. It's this is not gambling to me. This is this is going to make me a lot more money than than than, you know, uh, a regular nine to five job listening to a boss over my shoulder will. So, um, yeah, it, it took a long time, even to this day, a little bit. 
I, I get like, maybe not questioned, but they even probably think to this day, oh my God, uh, at least you made a career of it, but Jesus, it's so scary. You're, you have to put money into action and gamble. I don't even look at it as that. And that's the reason why a lot of gamblers lose because they do uh, sweat the money so bad and chase and start getting money on their credit cards. Why do you think every one of these casinos has those credit card machines? It's because people chase. They take money out at the end of the night and, and try to get money off your card or whatever it may be uh, that you shouldn't be using for gambling purposes. So um, I, there's no sweat equity. I don't sweat games at all. I never get... Um, I, I really don't get like romanticized by betting sports or anything. Yeah, I could talk to you about that for days, but we're running out of time here. So I want to remind everybody watching, if you have a question for the crack man, shoot us a message on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, wherever, wherever you're consuming the show. Uh, and uh, we'll try to get to those questions. And uh, that also reminds me, crack, I got to do it one more time. If you don't mind, I got to remind everybody at home, download the crack wins app. Okay. It's helped my game. Uh, it's helped tons of the friends of mine that I've turned on to this app. Uh, shout out to Johnny cocktails in LA. I'll even give him a shout out. Uh, you know, uh, I've got a lot of friends that are making a lot of money off the crack wins app. It's got all the information you need in it. Download it today. Well, great. Thank you. Yeah. The, we have the app. We also have crackwins.com. And uh, yeah, no, listen, uh, good luck to everybody. Also remember, don't you know, don't forget this. Go to WSN. Check out all their content. Great stuff there. Uh, also, we're on YouTube. And uh, tell us what you think. What, what, what you think of me? What you think of John? What you think of Vegas? What you think of Wisecrack? So, uh, all right, guys, great. Uh, appreciate it. We had a great show today, and uh, look forward to see you guys next time. Yeah, this one flew by, but we'll uh, we'll do it again next week, Crack. Awesome.